How's it going, guys? It is 1.51 p.m. 20th of April here in Japan. We have a past level question for endocrine step one, internal medicine, family medicine, TCK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, MHL, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Let's start the clip. 24 year old man, one day history, palpitations, neck pain, recently recovered from an upper respiratory tract viral infection. Heart rate 95. Question wants to know the most, what's most likely seen as patients. So let's just whip the dance choice here. We'll go backwards. Choice C. Antimicrosomal antibodies, aka antithyroperoxidase antibodies, wrong fucking answer, refers to Hashimoto thyroiditis, can also see antithyroglobulin. So we'd have a decreased T3, decreased T4, increased TSH. They want you to know there's a lymphocytic infiltrate thyroid gland with uh, Hashimoto. Okay, so it's eponymous. It's also known as chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. So that's textbook hypothyroidism clearly we don't have hypothyroidism in this case wrong fucking answer choice d increased serum tsh wrong fucking answer because this is hyperthyroidism not hypothyroidism and in primary <clears throat> in primary hyperparathyroidism the fuck am i saying right now hyperparathyroidism we're talking about the fucking thyroid gland i'm not going to restart the whole fucking clip now am i so in primary hyperthyroidism, we would have a suppressed TSH, not increased TSH. Now some of you watch this clip say, well, Mike, you could have an increased serum TSH if it's secondary hyperthyroidism, right? If we had a TSH secreting tumor, let's say, of the anterior pituitary or OMG, a TRH secreting tumor, hypothalamus, non-existent, okay? There's one question on one of the offline NBMEs where they do tell you there's decreased serum TSH and decreased T3, T4, and they want secondary hypothyroidism as the answer. You could see that in Sheehan syndrome as the example. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see free T4 in the normal range? Wrong fucking answer, because we have hyperthyroidism here. So free T4 is most accurate for thyroid function. Okay, it's a long discussion as far as pregnancy and how thyroid binding globulin works. I've made lots of clips here on the YouTube about it. But the long story short is that if a patient has symptoms of hypo or hyperthyroidism, free T4 will be out of the normal range. So if a patient presents you thyroid, okay, there's no symptoms at all, free T4 is going to be in the normal range. Okay, so in this case, as I just fucking said, Clearly, we have symptoms of hyperthyroidism, so free T4 is going to be elevated. It's most accurate for thyroid function. Screening tests for TCK, you're going to do TSH in non-pregnant persons. In pregnancy, you're going to use free T4 for screening. Free T4, most accurate for everybody pregnant, non-pregnant. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, diffusely increased Iodine-131 uptake, wrong fucking answer. This would refer to Graves' disease, okay? So in Graves, we've got high T3, T4, suppressed TSH, and we have diffusely increased uptake. It's past level, knowing that, okay? So we have mechanism being TSI, thyroid-stimulating immunoglobulin, activating antibodies against the TSH receptor, type 2 hypersensitivity in Graves, and... It's a long discussion as far as 2CK stuff when we have a thyroid nodule as an example. But if we have increased, uh, if we have hyperthyroidism in the setting of a nodule, we want to do iodine uptake because if it's a single nodule, we have toxic adenoma. If it's diffuse uptake, despite palpating out of if we have diffuse uptake, that's going to be Graves' disease. If it's a multinodular uptake, toxic multinodular goiter. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice A, decreased iodine uptake, correct answer. Diagnosis being decorvating thyroiditis, aka subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, or just simply subacute thyroiditis. They can give you the same question here, just write subacute thyroiditis as the answer. That's it. That confuses students because they, they don't know of it by that name. I've seen it on the NBME exam, okay? So this is textbook classic, going to be viral infection, followed by painful slash tender thyroid gland a few days later. U.S. simile need not mention the viral infection. Give you the same fucking question without mentioning the viral infection here. It's still decorving because we have a tender slash painful thyroid gland. Okay? So what you need to know is that, holy shit, uptake's always low, even when we're hyper. So U.S. simile, they're not going to give you 
uh, dequervain thyroiditis when it's hypo because they want to assess that you know uptake is always low even when we're hyper. So if they give it to you hypo, obviously you're going to select decreased uptake. So they like assessing you decreased uptake even when we're hyper. This is because the thyroid gland is not producing new thyroid hormone in this case. It's not uptaking iodine and producing hormone. We have inflammation. We have increased spacing between the cells of the thyroid gland. So we have thyroid hormone leaking out into the blood. That's why we have hyperthyroidism here. But we don't have production of new thyroid hormone. That's why uptake is low. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.